I don't think girls ever thought of themselves as being governors or United States senators or mayors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a period of time that women didn't serve in public office. And I came from a very blue-collar family. Um, mm -hmm. They grew up in a small town. Uh, there was nothing in the makeup of that that would make you ever look at yourself and see yourself in that kind of a role. I wanted to be an adventurer. I love the swashbucklers, the old Errol Flynn movies, you know, and, 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 and even remember having an early conversation with my mother, which I said I was going to stow away on a tramp steamer and see the world. And she responded, but girls don't do those sorts of things. Uh -huh. And I was furious. Like, what do you mean girls don't stow away on tramp steamers <laughs> and see the world? I mean, why not? And so that uh -huh. why not question has driven everything. You know, when I came along, women, if they became pregnant as public school teachers, were told either they had to quit or they'd be fired. And so it was in the 70s that we were passing the laws that said you can't fire women simply for being pregnant as public school teachers. It was that period where women were told you've got to get your husband's signature in order to get credit cards. And it was the 70s we passed laws that said you can't do that. I knew I could not become president, but the time had come when persons other than males could run for the presidency of this country. Why couldn't a woman run? Why couldn't a black person run? I was angry that everything always, always redounded to the benefit of white males. I was the first woman who had ever represented a major country in the United Nations, any major country mm -hmm. whatsoever. I knew that that uh, what I was saying, you know, that in Feminine Mystique implied enormous social change yes. and uh, institutions and it, that there would have to be a movement of social change. And you might say that I took responsibility, uh, decided I had to help take responsibility for the movement that I helped break into, bring into being. We began the project as uh, talking leadership, people who've been leaders, people who can talk about leadership, um, but certain kind of people, women, and women who lived in a certain period. I'm so interested that not just people in the future, but our own students understand that many of these things, if they didn't happen in their lifetimes, they happened in our lifetimes, and they see this as ancient history. We think that it's terribly important that young people do realize that there was a past that they came from, that their choices and their opportunities were rooted in, and it wasn't so long ago, and they need to know more about these people. When you're running for the United States Senate, or as in Carol Mosley Braun's case, or Shirley Chisholm's case, you've said, I'm going to raise this to the highest level. I'm going to make a bid for the United States presidency so that I can tell people something about um, what it's like, what it takes, and really send the message that it's important. I think that those women are very important for us to have on film so that our students, so that journalists and writers and people in the future can see what they look like and listen to how they talked about themselves. Roe versus Wade was such fundamental change in the sense of the options women had. There's a great quote that says, um, you know, in today's world, women are still doing the majority of housework, but not all of it like they used to. Men are doing more than their fathers did, but still not half, and nobody's happy. And I think that's probably exactly where it is. Our goal was to get elected, obviously. Um, but it was also, I mean, if you take a look at w the discussions that Fritz and I had before, that, mm -hmm. that we had during the campaign, and that we've had, you know, even recently, it's, it's getting rid of that door that was hung, that sign that was hung on the door of the White House that said, men only. And, you know, white men only. To say that you can't do something because you're a black person, has never been an excuse, a legitimate reason in my, my worldview. To say you can't do something because you're a girl has never been a legitimate reason in my world. There's no question in my mind that there's no passion much greater than that cause that comes from a cause. And this was my cause, my child's right to a public education. And 
I also think that there's probably no greater way to create passion than a mother's anger. <laughs> and I had that. I was so frustrated. This was a period of time in this country when there were no federal laws giving children a right to special education or to any education if they were disabled in any way. There was no law like that in my state. And my son was sent home from school in the first grade and simply told he could not come back. Mm. You try that for a while, it really does a lot to breed anger and, and passion and, and determination. I think the response to why we're doing such a thing at Rutgers, um, it's a layered response. But let me start with the woman, and it was Ruth Mandel, who said we should record these women's testimony. And here she is, longtime director of the Center for American Women in Politics, recognizing early on that monitoring and supporting and educating people about women in leadership was vitally important. But there's a broader reason, too, and that has to do with the fact that Rutgers has become a kind of mecca for people who are trying to understand women's lives better. Even if uh, just these raw materials exist for a while, uh, they are so valuable because the voices and the images are there. I can imagine materials being developed that are used in classrooms. The scholars that we have here at the university who can use these materials are critical to this and critical to being able to carry on. Ruth and I are hoping to interview a lot of people, but we don't want it to stop there. We see this as an ongoing project. In a certain technical way, a literal way, we've achieved equality. Where is the next movement? Where is the movement? Where is the cutting edge? See, if I were younger, I would see myself as leading a, or helping to lead, a resistance to American domination. All right. I mean, there's too much. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the not only is the is the wage discrepancy in America yes. getting worse and worse, but the discrepancy between the power and the wealth of the U.S. and the rest of the world is getting mm -hmm. worse and worse. I heard more often than not, well, you know, it's time for a woman. You know, the men have messed it up, it's time for a woman. I mean, I had people, farmers and, and overalls in Iowa come up to me and say, you know, young lady, I didn't know about you before this, but you'd make, you'd make a fine president. So, you know, for me to be able to go around places and see people willing to overcome both race and gender and give me a hearing, whether they thought I could win or not. We are, we are seeing that a lot of the men and women who are re really well equipped to run for office don't want to run for office because of all of the stuff that goes on. And uh, we really need good people, people that are committed, people that have integrity, people that have soul to run for office. Very mm. important for that message to be communicated to young women. That's, uh, I often sign, when people ask me to sign something for their little girls or something, yes. I often sign, remember girls can do anything. Mm -hmm. so I, think this, I, I think it's very important for girls to be taught this and to believe it.